Hey everyone, and welcome to Might I Add. I'm Kyle Partain, and today we'll be talking about the diamond. That's right everyone, it's all about UCF baseball and softball today. And joining me here to walk us through things is Madison Little. How are you doing, Madison? I'm good, how are you? Ah, doing great, it's another Monday, it's gonna be a great time. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. All right, let's open things up with some UCF baseball. The Knights started their season this weekend with four straight games against the Siena Saints, winning all four games. In the opening uh, match, the Knights' offense was slow to get going, but it was Jeffrey Pena who sealed it with a throw from the outfield all the way to home plate with an incoming Saints runner. They tagged him out at home plate, avoiding the tied game. If Pena doesn't make that throw, Siena will tie the game, and the narrative on the whole series might have been entirely different. So Madison, how crucial was that play to realistically this entire series? I think that that play set the tone for the entire series. Had he not made that play, Siena would have tied the game and it could have been a completely different outcome. Their out offense started a little slow that game, so based off how they were playing, I don't know if they would have come back and I don't know if that would have affected the whole series. Yeah, the momentum could have been entirely different going into the second and third games the next day. A tie against Siena or a loss against Siena doesn't really sound the same as a win on opening night. No. Anyways, Pena certainly didn't slow down the rest of the weekend, though. Saturday brought a double header for UCF, and the offense definitely came to life those two games. UCF scored a combined 20 runs during the two games and never looked back in the series. Head coach Greg Lovelady said that, the starting, that starting the season off with this kind of offense is a great thing, although there's definitely some room for improvement. So Madison, where can the Knights improve? I think this is a young team. There's nine true freshmen on the team. And I think that just working on the confidence of those younger players and just ironing out the little details like like working on errors, making less errors in the games, I think that will definitely imp like help them. And I think we'll start to see that those details iron themselves out as these players get used to this game at this level. Yeah, and it's a lot of that's due to, you know, uh, freshman mistakes, mm -hmm. getting those jitters out for opening weekend. And there are a lot of freshmen. It's a new team. They're still gelling together. But there's a lot of promise showing here after this first weekend. And the last game on Sunday brought a different kind of energy to it. Knights pitcher Joe Sheridan finally got to start after not being able to play for 21 straight months. Sheridan pitched for four innings and notched five strikeouts in his time at the mound. He did allow two Seattle runs, however. So Madison, all things said and done, how was it to see Joe back on the mound? I think it was great. I think he did well. I think considering he hasn't been on the mound since 2018, he did well. I mean, you got to get warmed back up, get back used, get used to things again. So I think he did well for the situation, and I think we'll see a lot more of him this season. Yeah, that's a lot of promise, a lot of promise there. Everyone excited about it. The entire bullpen was cheering, freaking out. You could see it in the dugout. The team was so excited to see yeah. Joe back on the mound. And looking forward for the Knights, they get to host the Stetson Hatters on Tuesday night before they hit the road this weekend to play at Auburn in a series. What will UCF need to do to be able to take, kind of steal this series away from Auburn this weekend? Like I said, I'm a big believer in confidence determines outcome. So I think they need to be confident. I think they need to work on these little things, maybe get some more practice in the um, batting cages, you know, just work on these little errors. And I think that going into it, if they're confident and they keep the same energy they've had this opening weekend, I think things will be good for them. So a win against Stetson would be crucial before hitting the road on Auburn. I do. I think that not winning against Stetson might hinder their drive going into it and just kind of throw things off for them. Yeah, and obviously Stetson, <laughs> a very proud program, two years ago was a national seed, so that's not an easy game, folks. However, like the UCF baseball team, the softball team also hosted four games this weekend. The team hosted the Knights Classic Tournament, and they saw and then that saw them play teams like Villanova, FAU, and even Iowa State two different times. The Knights struggled in their first match against Iowa State, but eventually won the game 3-2 to two in nine innings of play. So, Madison, what kind of caused this slow start for the Knights? They've been dominant for the most of the season, and then just a slow start here. I think a lot of it has to do with their last game coming off of a rough win against Washington. Um, I think that that just kind of put them in the dumps a little going in, but a win's a win. I mean, go 1-0. They went 1-0, so... <laughs> That's that's true. Every every team at UCF loves to go one and zero, guys. Every single team. But yeah, that was probably a lot. It had a lot to do with Washington. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's a bad taste in their mouths. But they yeah. did get it out. They won that game, and then the team definitely rebounded. However, securing three straight big wins the rest of the tournament. 
They defeated Villanova 7-3, Iowa State 9-1, and FAU 10 to nothing, which is very reminiscent of their opening weekend scores. So, Madison, is this the real kind of team that we should expect to see, or is it more so the team against Washington that we should expect to see? I think that this team is definitely stronger than teams in the past. I mean, they have a lot of new players who add value to the team. I think that there's some new pitchers that can throw a strike and give Aaliyah White a little break, which I think will really benefit them a lot. I know that in seasons past, she's just kind of been their go-to for everything, and she pitched a lot, but I think giving her this break and just allowing other people to get time will definitely benefit them this yeah. season. Yeah, and there's a big focus this season on the offense. The last couple mm-hmm. of seasons, the Knights have really hung their hat on defense. Now it's time for them to get the offense going, and you can really see that when they actually start clicking and gelling. Mm-hmm. The team is very di- uh, difficult to beat at bat. And up next, the Knights get to host another top 25 test when they play Tennessee two times this week. The Volunteers own a record of 6-2 and two and own wins over Utah, Kansas, and Northwestern. However, both of their losses were on the road against teams that have dynamic offenses. UCF's last test was a disappointing 13-2 loss to the Washington Huskies, like Madison said, and they're certainly looking for a better result and a more competitive result this time around. So Madison, should UCF feel confident, or is there a lot that they need to work on before this test? I think there's always more that can be worked on. I think that um, Coach just needs to get these girls more reps in the batting cages so they can get their bats going earlier in the game. I think that, like I said, confidence is always key, so I do think they should be confident. I know it might be a little harder with a team like this, but I think that confidence will definitely play a key, And but there's always things to work on that they need to work on. Absolutely, and the, the Knights are uh, certainly looking to get a big win, at least one of those two wins, at least one of those two games get a win. Anyways, Knights fans, it's time to take a look at the upcoming schedule for UCF's games this week. This week, the men's basketball team travels to Cincinnati on Wednesday to take on the Bearcats, and the Knights will return to Orlando on on Saturday to host Tulane. The women's basketball team continues their make-or-break stretch the season this week when they host USF before they travel to Connecticut on Saturday. The baseball team is going to host the Stetson Hatters on Tuesday and then travel to Auburn for a series with the Tigers over the weekend. And finally, the softball team will head out to Tampa for the USF tournament from Friday through Sunday. The team will play both Tennessee and FIU two different times. Well, guys, that wraps up everything here. Thanks so much to everyone for tuning in to today's episode. Be sure to tune in on Mondays at noon to see Jarrett Kappelman and the rest of the crew bring you all of our biggest sports content. And, of course, you're not going to want to miss our very own HTF podcasts. Also, be sure to follow us on social media at Hitting the Field to keep up with what's happening here at HTF. Thanks again, everyone, for tuning in today. I'm Kyle Partain. She's Madison Little, and we'll catch you next week on Might I Add.